uh, everybody after lunch. As mentioned, we'll be talking about object property expressions and looking at flaws and being able to correct them. I'll first give some motivation about that and then how we're going to uh, address it and solve it. So as we know, there is ontology development in many subject domains. It used to be mainly only in healthcare and life sciences, but it's broadened uh, to basically all subject domains being carried out by both knowledge engineers and subject domain experts. Uh, especially from the last couple of years that has resulted in requests for additional features in ontology languages, most specifically that we're looking at as Alt2DL. Uh, there are more features there available uh, to be able to represent aspects about object properties, expressions or relationships. Uh, what is also called the role box. Uh, we're focusing here specifically on the property hierarchy, domain and range restrictions, the properties characteristics such as transitivity, symmetry, asymmetry, and property chains. Uh, that is the only thing uh, that we're looking at with respect to the role box. However, with those additional features that are available in all 2 dl uh, that on the one hand requires greater care by the knowledge engineers and subject domain experts on representing their knowledge about properties, and the flip side of that coin is that it actually makes it easier to make mistakes, uh, both logical and, in a sense, ontological uh, mistakes. I give a few examples in uh, what, what kind of issues may arise. We're looking at more de uh, like looking at that more detail later on. Uh, for instance, the domain and range flaws. Uh, in this case, when we would have a property hierarchy with has parent is a sub-property of has mother. Uh, obviously, the domain and range of has parents is more generic because it's only between animals or between humans versus has mother. Uh, and if you fl flip them around, you actually have an error in the representation of your object property hierarchy. Or for instance, with the domain and range restrictions, uh, that the domain or the range is declared to be an intersection of disjoint classes. And then you actually end up with an inconsistent uh, property. Uh, another one uh, is, can be fairly contentious, uh, is with respect to property characteristics. Uh, for instance, do, uh, transitivity, does that in, uh, is that inherent uh, across the property hierarchy? Or for instance, you have a way to so you have uh, represented your parent property as uh, asymmetric and its sub-property as symmetric. That will return an error by the reasoner, but it doesn't tell you there is actually a problem with the object property characteristics. And it doesn't point you to that error in uh, the rule box with respect to uh, the property characteristics. Uh, a more elaborate issue is with respect to property change. There's a further detail with respect to the pharmacogenomics ontology in the paper. I have here an easier example to show if we have here with the data mining and optimization ontology. We have a chain has main table, has feature, and then has feature. You can see here that the domain and range of the main table and has feature that, that have been declared in that ontology actually do match. Uh, however, that is not the case uh, with respect to the domains, but they have to be compatible. They have been, uh, we have for the domain for has feature is data table, and that is declared in the ontology as a sister class of data set. But purely due to the de declaration of this object, uh, the, the property chain, data set is being classified as a subclass of data table to maintain the consistency of the ontology. That is fine from a logical perspective, but ontologically, obviously, we do not want to have a data set as a subclass of a data table. Uh, currently, the explanation features in, uh, the, for instance, in Proto-J will not point to this specific issue, that that is actually the reason why you have a problem uh, in your ontology. So that, if we generalize a bit from that, we can look at okay, what type of flaws are actually being made in the object property expressions or in the role box. And consequently also then, okay, what actually are the features of what can be called a good role box, a good object property expressions, uh, or at least you can say a safe role box that will not result in uh, unexpected deductions, reclassifications of a class elsewhere in a taxonomy or even inconsistent classes. If we look at uh, current uh, explanation features, the modeling flaws uh, in the role box often show up as unexpected or undesirable deductions regarding classes in the T-box, even though when the original problem, logically or ontologically, is uh, with respect to the object property expressions. And uh, so they point not to the actual flaw in the role box. So then the next question comes from okay, how to guide the modeler uh, to finding that flaw and being able to actually revise the ontology once that flaw is being found. 
and that is what the remainder of the presentation is about. We split it in two sections, uh, one with respect to sub-properties in AL, uh, and they are basically the base, so-called basic hierarchy, and then we have so-called complex uh, ex expressions, they involve the property chaining uh, to see okay, where, wh what mistakes can be made and how can we uh, correct them. So first looking at the basic properties, a uh, few pre two, two slides with some preliminaries on notation. As mentioned, there is a basic form and a complex form. The basic of a form has just the basic sub-properties where you use S uh, as a sub-property of R, and we focus only on the object properties. The complex form have the, the property chains. Further on, we use a notation that for typing a specific object property, we use this notation as a shortcut for the domain standard notation for domain and range uh, axioms. Uh, and we introduced the notion of a user-defined domain and range classes. So we have here, uh, yeah, I can see that now. DR is the domain of object property R, and that is then a specific class. And we have here the range of R for a specific property is a specific class. Second aspect for the preliminaries, uh, if we consider uh, okay, a more compact notation of Stroik, that was the base language of AL2DL, they call it their role inclusion axioms. Uh, the first constraint, which is a general constraint for the language, is that the hierarchy itself has to be regular. And there are different uh, possibilities for this role inclusion axioms, what we put on the left hand side of the inclusion axiom. There is here, uh, when we take the W, as it can be varied with respect to the object property on the right hand side. It can be either the notion of transitivity that we encode in there, uh, the inverses, or a simple uh, uh, property chain, which also can be just one uh, object property, and then we have just our simple or basic version of uh, a role hierarchy, or we can have some elaborate cases that we will see later on uh, in detail. Now, if we're then looking at uh, yeah, object sub-properties, we actually have to look at, okay, when is a property really a sub-property of another property? If you look at the standard, it basically says here at the first point, given uh, an assertion uh, that a property S is a sub-property of R, then it means that all individuals in the property assertions involving property S must also be related to each other through property R. Uh, that has a similar notion as what we see with class subsumption, but then applied to a uh, role or object property subsumption. So we have that for subsumption for all object properties holds if the subsumed property is more constrained, uh, such that in every model the set of individual property assertions is a subset of those of its parent property. So we will have to look at, okay, when can, with, with that regard, that in every model one a property is a sub-property of another. There are two ways, uh, essentially, to constrain a specific property, and either one suffices to actually have ontologically the notion of a sub-property of another property. One is by specifying its domain and range. The other one is by declaring its property characteristics. So if you show here uh, an intuition, uh, on the left-hand side is one example of a possible model that we have our S subsumed by, uh, sorry, our S subsumed by R, and in this case, the domain of S actually is typed with a subset of the domain that it actually has been declared for R, uh, and likewise for the range. But they can be one side can be equivalent to it. It, is basic, it gives a similar idea as the notion of subsetting in UML that uh, you may be familiar with. On the other hand, if you're looking at the property characteristics here on the right-hand side, uh, the extended hierarchy based on the work by Terry Halpin uh, in his book, as well as a more recent paper, I want to differ in principle what kind of property characteristics actually do exist. And for instance, here we have that if a property uh, is asymmetric, it means that it is both anti-symmetric as well as irreflexive. So each property for which that it is hold. So we could have, for instance, uh, a property uh, uh, R being irreflexive and S being asymmetric, but not vice versa, at least ontologically with respect to uh, the property characteristics. Now for all, <coughs> there are only very few remaining. 
Uh, so we have only the transitivity, uh, the reflexivity, uh, irreflexivity, and asymmetry and symmetry. So there's not that much at the moment that we can do with uh, this notion of uh, sub, uh, yeah, sub, uh, subsuming properties. But there is still some uh, possibility there. Now, if we uh, translate this in intuitive notion, as described in more detail in the paper, into uh, what we call here a sub-property compatibility service, is a way to check that the properties and the, the property hierarchy that you represent in your ontology actually conforms to the specification that indeed, for its intention, S is a sub-property indeed from, uh, from R. Informally, uh, it first checks the compatibility of the domain and range axioms and afterwards uh, for uh, the object property characteristics. With respect to the domain and range axiom as an ex extension from the RBAX compatibility that has been defined uh, earlier in an earlier paper. Uh, overall, it exhaustively checks each permutation of domain and range and then the characteristics of the parent and the child's property in a property hierarchy. Uh, to show you the first and the main part of uh, the definition, uh, we have for each pair of object properties R and S, such that S is a sub-property of R, and oh, oh, the ontology uh, uh, adhering to the syntax and the semantics are specified in the standard. <coughs> Sorry. And we have the first three tests. They care about uh, the, the domain and range axioms that have been defined for those specific properties. So in this case, the domain of S uh, has to be a subset or equivalent to the domain of R, and likewise uh, for the range for S uh, and R. And it cannot be the other way around. Uh, then we have a set 4 to 11, the last one, uh, with respect to uh, the, the object property characteristics. So for instance, here we see again the test number eight, if uh, uh, property R is irreflexive, then ontologically, with respect to the features of the property characteristics, its sub-property has to be either also irreflexive or it has to be asymmetric uh, for that. Uh, I can do that for each uh, one of them and to check that indeed, with respect to the object property characteristics, we have an ontologically correct uh, definition of our uh, hierarchy. Uh, then an all-object property hierarchy is said to be compatible if and only if test 1 and either test 2 and 3 uh, hold for all pairs of property and sub-properties in, uh, in our ontology and with tests 4 to 11 hold for all pairs of property and sub-properties uh, in, in these cases also provided there is indeed uh, an assertion of that. If there's no assertion you basically just can skip that test uh, for it. <coughs> Now, then, if we know, now that we know that for a basic uh, property hierarchies, how it should look like uh, if it is a good or at least a safe hierarchy, we also can look at, okay, but what then if it, one of those tests is actually violated? Or basically, you're looking then at, okay, how can we fix this flaw if the test is violated? Uh, there are, for each one of them, there are one or more options uh, for revision. Uh, within, there is a long list in uh, the paper for that for each specific test. Uh, one thing on the terminology being used there is that raising a warning denotes that it is not a logical error, but in that sense an ontological one. Whereas forcing a revision actually indicates there is a logical error that must be fixed to actually have a consistent uh, ontology. And then propose, indicate suggestions how the flaw, a flaw can uh, be best revised. In some cases, ignoring the suggestion is possible as well because it's not uh, a logical error. So to show here a selection to give a flavor of how those uh, revisions look like, so if test one fails, it raises a warning that domain and range restrictions of either S or R uh, are in conflict with the property hierarchy. You can either change the property hierarchy itself, and uh, you can change the domain and range restrictions, or you can say, well, look, I have to add a new class there uh, to change it. And a similar uh, thing holds for, uh, for B. Uh, this, the third step then is because by in, 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 in steps A and B, some changes can have been made both in the hierarchy as well, in, in the rule box hierarchy, as well as in the T box with respect to the hierarchy of the classes. You would have to run it again to check if it is indeed with the revision and revisions correct or not. So that is the first part, and you have to record the changes, as we will see uh, later on in step I. Uh, 
Uh, to give one example of the list of, from, from tests 4 to 11, uh, the irref irreflexive one, uh, and if that test 8 fails to detect either an irref irreflexivity or an asymmetric axiom with respect to S, then we raise a warning, R is irreflexive, so S should be either irreflexive or asymmetric uh, to be ontologically sensible uh, hierarchy. So the options to, uh, you can change it is either adding uh, the asymmetry or irref irreflexivity. You obviously can remove the original irreflexivity that may have been just a mistake adding it in there, or you can change the position of R and S in the object property uh, hierarchy. And for the other ones, it's a similar pattern, although obviously the details uh, vary a little bit. When you go through all of those tests, then obviously you would have to run the compatibility services again to check uh, if any changes have been made in those steps. Uh, and it can be the case, however, that uh, you basically change back an original change that you have made in steps A to C, that you have changed back in either st steps 4 to 11. So you can't keep on going backwards and forwards because then you end up in an infinite loop. So therefore we stored after the first run, uh, our, the results here from what has been changed uh, to basically to block the loop uh, for it, that you don't end up in an infinite loop. If you change something back that you already had changed, you actually must revise it manually uh, yourself. Uh, then what we did uh, is, after having defined this sub-property uh, compatibility service, is just to s find a couple of uh, ontologies on the internet. We use the Tones repository. And ontologies, but this is a selection of it that fitted on the screen. So I have more ontologies that I evaluated. Uh, basically, they were just selected for being a real ontology, not a tutorial ontology or a pet or a toy ontology, but a real one and that have a bunch of uh, object properties and sub-object property axioms. And basically analyzing what actually has been done. Uh, one point that is interesting on its own is that there are several ones that actually heavily <coughs> use this notion of uh, the, the idea of subsetting, as you see also in, uh, in UML uh, for that, uh, and much less so with respect to uh, the object property characteristics. <laughs> we analyze them with respect to the sub-property compatibility service. There's a longer example of the outcome with that with uh, Biotop. There's a top uh, domain ontology for uh, yeah, biology, basically. Uh, they actually have the, what has process role is inconsistent. And the, actually, the root cause is that for the parent property, the parent of has process rule, has a range declared with uh, physical entity equality, and its sub rule had it, uh, a range declared as rule, which is disjoint from the other two. So therefore, the inconsistency come up. And you can with the, the test actually finds the error and actually can suggest where the error is and how to revise it. And in the meantime, it has been uh, corrected uh, for that. And there are more examples in uh, the paper for that. Now, if we look then at uh, the property chaining uh, in all, uh, do you recall uh, the three cases of the property chains? We can have several properties on the left-hand side and an R on the right-hand side. We can have R also on the left-hand side, starting with it, then a couple of other uh, properties and an R on the right-hand side of the inclusion axiom. Or we first have the other properties, then R and R also on uh, the right-hand side. Uh, now, to ensure, uh, to give an, uh, uh, the avoidance uh, of undesirable classifications or inconsistencies, that informally what the property chain compatibility service does is checking the domain and range classes from the left to the right, which have to be equal or a superclass, basically on the left-hand side of the inclusion. And a similar case holds for if we look at the domain and range axioms with respect to the one that we have on the left on the outer side and on the right on the outer side. I'll give an example uh, afterwards. So here more formally, so if you have for each set of object properties, we have uh, um, uh, according to an uh, adherence obviously to the L2 specification. We have our user-defined uh, domain and range axioms, or basically just a top axiom as nothing is uh, being defined. Then for each uh, of the property chain expressions, uh, you have to select the kind of one of the three kind of property chains that actually can occur. So we have either the pattern that we have different roles here on the left-hand side uh, from the one that we have here on the right-hand side, or we have, as again, we have here the repeat of that. So the first test for case S, R, S, and S, R afterwards as well, 
is checking uh, the compatibility of the domains and ranges on the left-hand side of the inclusion. So we have here the range of the first property has to be a subclass or equivalent to the domain of uh, the, the property, the second property in uh, the chain. Uh, test uh, for B and C are fairly similar across, across the three uh, options, but they basically check, okay, we're here for the domain of R, I'm sorry, the domain of S here has to be a subclass or equivalent to the domain of R, because that is what is basically linked up, basically to avoid any uh, inconsistency of or unexpected uh, classifications. And a similar case holds here for uh, the range of the last property here and the range uh, of R. And it is similar uh, for the other cases. Um, yeah. So if we see here an evaluation, again, with the data mining and optimization ontology from last year, we have here a more elaborate uh, property chain with realizes, addresses, and achieves. So if we go that through uh, the pro chains with different tests, in this case, we have here realizes, addresses, and achieves. So that is an instance of what you say here, case S. And we have to apply these three tests to see if it is actually a safe or a good property hierarchy. Uh, so test A passes because we have that the range of realizes here is a subclass or equivalent to the domain of addresses. So we have here this green part there. Uh, test SB uh, holds as well because we have the domain of realizes and the domain of achieves. They are the same as well, so that is fine. However, if we look at test C, that the range of addresses actually is supposed to be uh, a subclass of the range of achieves, but that is not the case because the union of DM task with optimization problem is actually a superclass by, by, by its very design from just a DM task. But there is here, as you see here, DM task there and DM task there. So the chain in that regard can be instantiated. It's not entirely 100% wrong, wrong, logically wrong. Uh, but if the range of addresses in the class expression happens to be actually a, a subclass of this optimization problem, the one that we have here in red, uh, then all its instances will be classified as a member of DM task as well, because that is enforced by the range of achieves. And that is something that we don't want to have because optimization problems and DM tasks are actually two entirely different things. Uh, so we don't want to have that occurring. Now in this case, we had only that reclassification, but if those two classes like DM task and uh, optimization problem were, were to have been declared disjoint, then the ontology would have become inconsistent. In this case, with respect to all the other uh, information represented in the ontology, the, the reasoner gave as an error back a bad individual of uh, the DM operation in the end, whereas actually the original problem was in the specification of our property, uh, our property chain. And the lead ontology de developer chose to revise the domain and range restrictions of addresses. So in that regard, you actually could go through the steps to actually correct uh, the material. Uh, there are more evaluation in the paper also for the original one about the pharmacogenomics uh, ontology for people who want to see more detail of that. Uh, then we look at the approach for proposing revisions. Uh, that is, the approach is similar to the one that we see for the sub-property compatibility service. We know now what constraints actually have to hold for good property change, or at least safe property change. So we only have to handle the violations. We can rely, again, in part on the extant reasoners for checking this, those domains and range and, and what is actually a, a subclass of the other one. But the feedback to the modeler has to be amended uh, for it to actually point to the problem in the property chain and suggesting how to revise it. Uh, to give you a selection also, uh, the, the full set of uh, uh, re re revisions are uh, in the paper. But if you say we're revising a flaw, uh, the test SA for the, the first test A for uh, the three different cases for the property change actually fairly similar because they're looking at checking the domain and ranges on the left hand side of the inclusion axiom. Uh, so if that one doesn't hold, if it's violated, then we actually have incompatible domain and ranges of those properties that are being changed. Uh, and that is certain to lead to an inconsistent class if those properties are used in class axioms and an inconsistent ontology when used in assertions about instances. And we, we chose to, to, uh, to go for the minimal uh, amount of correction. So you can change the domain or the range 
or you can change uh, the property uh, character in the property chain itself. If for the B and the C, uh, we're looking at incompatible domain and range, but that is also when that occurs, but it's only raising uh, a warning uh, in the expression. The correction, you can actually, we can laterally reason and reclassify because in some cases it may actually be correct. In the example that we saw with the data set and the data table, ontologically it was not, but it may be just the case that it is, so you're allowed to accept that. Or if it's not according to intention, then uh, it suggests you to revise it and only that specific thing to revise instead of a uh, larger set. And then afterwards, if you have made any changes, you have to run uh, the proper, uh, property chain compatibility service again uh, to, to verify that what your corrections actually really are proper corrections uh, for that. Uh, then to uh, conclude, uh, what we're looking at is identification of the type of flaws that can occur in object property expressions. Uh, we, uh, after the identification with that, we actually could define two compatibility servers, the sub-property uh, compatibility service and the property chain compatibility service that both check for meaningful object property hierarchies and property chaining. Uh, with that, we also could define proposals for how to revise uh, the ontology, including to change the object property expressions of the class hierarchy and how, or also in some cases, accepting uh, deductions. And as such, you actually have to, to bear in mind that both services are actually ontological reasoning services that augment the standard reasoners, uh, leading to safe and better object property expressions, hence a better ontology. We evaluated that with several domain ontologies and demonstrated that actually such flaws indeed do exist and uh, we actually have a path to uh, revision uh, for it. Uh, thank you.